What is going on with Rob Van Dam? Are we going to see Dwayne Johnson, a.k.a. The Rock, at Bound for Glory in some form? The waiting game for the Deona Perrazzo contract signing continues. The good brothers, Carl Anderson, Luke Gallows, say they want to finish their career with Impact Wrestling. All this and more are coming up next on Shooting Up North with Lewis Carlin right here on the Impact Lounge. Hey folks, welcome to Shooting Up North. I'm your host, Lewis Carlin. What is going on with Rob Van Dam, for crying out loud? What's going on with him? On the last podcast, I I spoke um, of the the recent interview he had where he mentioned that he's lost his passion for professional wrestling and he's just in it for the money and he's one of the highest paid members, if, if not the highest paid member of the Impact Wrestling roster. And And now he's done a few more interviews where he's mentioned that he's got... A number of projects that he's working on with the WWE. So he's working with the WWE on a number of projects. And there's another article, online article that came out that says Rob Van Dam is set to work with the WWE and talks about joining the company. What's going on with him, man? You know, and on top of that, on top of that, Impact Wrestling, their website, if you go to the roster page, they removed Rob Van Dam and they removed Katie Forbes. Uh, now, I've heard Rob Van Dam was on uh, the last um, episode of Impact Wrestling. It took on uh, Sammy Callahan. Rob Van Dam gave his 35 40% because the passion's just not there anymore with Rob Van Dam. So he gave his 40% and um, got through the match. Uh, it wasn't a very good match. Uh, but um, is, is that the last we're going to see of Rob Van Dam in Impact Wrestling? I mean, like, like as I mentioned, he's no longer on the roster page. They removed him. And it was on the Facebook. A number of people are talking about it. And actually, BQ uh, sent me a message, and he mentioned that um, that Van Damme and Forbes are, are um, no longer on the roster page. So so what's the deal here, man? What's going on? And and I'm thinking, this. well, this is what I think. This is what I think could have happened. You know, and I mentioned it on the last uh, podcast um, if uh, uh, that Scott Demore and Don Callis wouldn't be too happy uh, to hear that Rob Van Dam has lost his passion for professional wrestling when he's the highest paid member of the Impact Wrestling roster. I'm sure they weren't thrilled to to read that he's all set to work with the WWE on a number of projects either. And he, and he actually he did say that. That uh, he's open to work with the WWE and AEW. So WWE, AEW, if if it made sense. So he's open to working and he openly said that in, a, in an uh, online article as well. So Don Callis and Scott Demore, they cannot be happy to read this, right? <laughs> they can't be, they can't be thrilled to be reading that their highest, the highest paid person on their roster is openly talking about working with the WWE and um, has no problem moving to AEW um, shouldn't make sense. Now, if he goes to AEW, do, does does he think that he could get away with uh, with 40%, um, giving it just 40% and, and not having any passion for professional wrestling? Um, I, I, I don't think so, but, but it, um, unless... Unless he's saying that to get out of his contract, but I, I don't want to I don't want to open up any cans of worms or anything. I don't I don't I don't know any of the details though, so, so we we won't we won't go into that. But but back to Scott Demore and, and Don Callis, they can't be happy at all. What if they said, you know what, we're we don't we don't like what we're hearing here, and um, Rob Van Dam, thank you very much. Um, but uh, it's time to part ways. What what if that happened? It, it hasn't been announced yet. It's been kept quiet. It's been kept on the wraps. Uh, but I would think Rob Van Dam and Katie Forbes would be the type of people that would would come out and say something on their social media page if, if something like that happened. So I, I don't know what's happening, but anything's possible right now. I just find it weird. Um, well, not weird. It's too much of a coincidence, I, I guess you can say, uh, that uh, he is talking about losing his passion, wanting to work for the WWE, wanting to work for AEW, you know, set to work with the WWE uh, on a number of projects. And then he's removed from the Impact Wrestling page. So don't don't be shocked. Don't be shocked if an official announcement comes out 
that uh, Rob Van Dam and Katie Forbes have been released from Impact Wrestling. It could it could be that um, maybe they weren't happy with their photos and they're just they're taking the photos again and they're going to be back on the Impact Wrestling page, uh, on the roster page shortly. I don't know, but uh, I I just have a feeling that you know man, the Impact Wrestling management aren't too happy with what Rob Van Dam has been saying in his last couple of interviews. Uh, so. So we'll leave it. And, and again, don't be shocked. Don't be shocked if if they part ways. If if we see that uh, Impact Wrestling has released Rob Van Dam, and, and that would honestly, I know Rob Van Dam is a name, but as I mentioned in the last podcast, if you're not going to give it a hundred percent, and you're the highest paid person on the roster, does it really make sense for Impact Wrestling to keep you on? I mean, if he is in fact the highest paid member of the Impact Wrestling roster. They could spend that money wisely on other talent, and um, we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens uh, with Rob Van Dam and Katie. For Katie Forbes hasn't uh, hasn't really said anything um, negative about Impact Wrestling about wanting to work with other companies. But you know where Rob Van Dam goes, Katie Forbes is gonna go. So they're they're a team. They're a team. So uh, so we'll see. We'll we'll uh, we'll keep our eyes on that to see if anything uh, develops. Um, between Rob Van Dam and Impact Wrestling, and again, I could be wrong. I could be like, nothing. Everything could be fine between the between Impact Wrestling and Rob Van Dam, and and maybe I'm just too looking too hard into this. Uh, but uh, but we'll see. It's just uh, I have a I have a I have a like I said I have a feeling that uh, something is up. Uh, something is not okay between Impact Wrestling and Rob Van Dam. All right, The Rock. Let's talk about The Rock for a little bit. Uh, Dwayne Johnson. Um, the Rock, it's it's been all over. Ken Shamrock is going into the Impact Wrestling Hall of Fame, and he tweeted out, uh, "Rock, hey brother, I'm being inducted into the Impact Wrestling Hall of Fame. I would be very grateful if you could send an induction greeting. After all, I believe my time with you were the was the greatest memories in my greatest memories in wrestling. Thank you, Dwayne Johnson, aka The Rock, responds and says, "Congrats, my brother. Awesome news." I will take care of this and get get it to you by this weekend. And basically, the internet exploded. the The internet blew up with this because this this would be the first time. Uh, this would be the first non WWE appearance probably ever for The Rock, if if it in fact happens. But before, I mean. Before we get you know crazy that Impact Wrestling, I'm sorry that um, Dwayne Johnson will be showing up at Bound for Glory for Impact Wrestling. Let's let's think about this for a little bit. I mean, I mean, people are on on social media going nuts over this. They're like, The Rock is going to make an appearance at, at Bound for Glory. Um, there's graphics with The Rock and and Impact Wrestling, and um, people are saying, you know, The Rock is. He's um, showing up. Impact Wrestling, huge get for Impact Wrestling. Okay, let's let's just take a step back. Let's take a step back for a second. Let's take a deep breath and think about this for a second. Is The Rock actually going to show up at Impact Wrestling? First of all, first of all, if The Rock was going to be at Impact Wrestling, don't you think that Impact Wrestling? Their social media will be blowing up with it. Don't you think the Impact Wrestling social media, the Facebook page, the Twitter page, their Instagram page, that's all they would be talking about, The Rock coming to Impact Wrestling? That's that's not happening. That's not happening on the social media page. This is just a quick Twitter conversation between Ken Shamrock and Dwayne Johnson. Now, I find it interesting. You know, I got I got, I got two takes on this, okay? I, I find it first I find it interesting that Ken Shamrock and uh, Dwayne Johnson, who are supposedly tight, but Ken Shamrock feels he needs to resort to Twitter to ask The Rock uh, the question of whether or not he will um, record an induction video for the Impact Wrestling Hall of Fame. Don't you think that this could have been a private message? I mean, if they're so tight, don't you think it could have been a private message between them? I mean. If, if if I'm thinking of topics for for uh, my podcast and I want to run them by BQ, I, I don't go on Twitter and I say, hey, BQ, what do you think of this topic? 
Yeah. You think this topic will work, BQ? I, I sent him a private message. I text him. Yeah, you know, or I or I send him a a um a Facebook message through Messenger. You know, a private message, a private conversation between me and and BQ. I'm thinking, why? Well, I mean, what if like what if you put it up there and the Rock said, oh, I'm sorry, I can't. I'm 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 too busy, or or I'm sorry, but um the, I can't do it because um I'm WWE blue, through and through. Yeah, you know, what what if what if he got to know? I mean, it just it, it just didn't doesn't seem like it's like two guys that are really tight. But they have to ask each other a question, or one has to ask the other a question on um, through social media, uh, meaning that he can't get a hold of the other person any any other way. Uh, that's that's my that's one take. But my second take on it, and I think people listening, uh, hope hopefully people aren't getting a little upset with me right now um, by by me talking about this. But my I think you'll enjoy my second take a little better. My second take on that is. That uh, Ken Shamrock already asked him privately, and The Rock said okay, and he said, you know what? Let's uh, we want to generate some buzz for Impact Wrestling. Is it okay if I ask you through social media, and then you respond yes, and it'll create a lot of buzz and publicity for Impact Wrestling, uh, which is uh, what we're hoping to do. And Dwayne Johnson, aka The Rock, said sure. Let's do that. We could do that, but but I'm sure he will want something in return, though, right? What if, what if he said, you know what? I, I will do this. I will make an appearance at Bound for Glory if Impact Wrestling promotes the XFL. You know, because I, I doubt that WWE is going to do any promoting for the XFL. What if, what if that's the case? What if, what if XF, what, the XFL is trying to get a TV deal? What if they show up on Access TV? What if Access TV gives them? Gives them a TV deal. Granted, it's not the, you know, it doesn't have as, as, as many subscribers as, as something like Fox. But does Fox want the XFL? Are they going to be, is the, is the XFL going to be on a, a top, you know, top um, television station? Or are they just starting out and they're just trying to get on TV? And what if, what if, um, what if, what if they're working on a deal with Access TV? And what if The Rock is going to do this to get publicity for the XFL? You know, it's it's a possibility. This is this is something that I think about when 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 I got nothing when I got nothing to do. Okay, but but this this is this this makes a whole lot of sense. This makes a whole lot of sense, and I can see it happening. I can see it happening. I could see Dwayne Johnson showing up. You know, it'll be um he'll be there virtually. He won't be there in person, but he'll send a virtual message. Any anything with Dwayne Johnson. Will be accepted by Impact Wrestling. No, so he could, uh, he could um, do anything they he wants. He could show up. He could, he could, they could. Um, he could say, "Well, you know what? I'll only show up on Josh Matthews' phone," and uh, Impact Wrestling will say, "Okay, that's good enough for us." And <laughs> Josh Matthews will stand in front of the camera, holding the phone up with with uh, Dwayne Johnson giving his message. That's what the that that they'll do anything. But what he gives a virtual message, and and in exchange. Publicity for the XFL, it's possible. It's possible. I that's I could say I could see that's a that's a likely scenario. That's a well I shouldn't say likely. That's that's a possible a possible scenario uh, there. But but nonetheless, you know it's it's creating a lot of uh, buzz uh, for for Impact Wrestling. And like I said, I I people are getting people are getting very very excited right now. I just I, I said in the beginning, you know, let's take a step back, let's take a deep breath because I don't want people to to build this up and then wind up getting disappointed uh, when it just um, when it's just like a Twitter message that he sends or something, um, as opposed to sending a virtual message that's played during Bound for Glory. So that that's that's why I said let's take a step back, let's take a deep breath. But the XFL thing, you know, it sounds pretty good to me. Sounds like a possible some sounds this, this, sounds like a possible scenario to me. All right, so let's move along. Let's move along. The Diona Perazzo contract signing is still being played out. It still hasn't happened. The waiting game continues. When will Diona Perazzo sign that Impact Wrestling contract that she's been offered about about two and a half, three weeks ago? When is she going to sign that contract? What is she waiting for? 
every day. I thought by now I would be. I thought on this podcast I would be reporting that she has signed the contract, but she still hasn't signed it yet. She still hasn't signed a contract with Impact Wrestling. So what, my question: What is she waiting for? I think she's close. I think she's close. She uh, she was going to be on a um, on an indie show. I think October 11th, which was a uh, Two weeks before Bound for Glory, but she canceled. Uh, I think it was the GFC, the collective she was going to be on, and uh, she canceled that uh, appearance uh, due to COVID nineteen because she was afraid uh, of catching it and having to quarantine, and which would make her miss Bound for Glory. So that's um, that's encouraging news right there. Not that she canceled. You know, you never want to see anybody cancel. A, um, a an indie appearance, uh, especially with tickets bought, and uh, you never want to see that. So uh, it's unfortunate that she had to cancel that indie appearance. But when I I said it, it's it's good, it's encouraging, because if she didn't have interest in signing with Impact Wrestling, if she wasn't about to put pen to paper, I don't think she would really care about missing Bound for Glory. That's 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 how I that's how I feel. I don't think she would be incredibly concerned about missing Bound for Glory. So, but uh, she's putting Bound for Glory, she's putting Impact Wrestling ahead, ahead of everything else. So I really think that's encouraging news when it comes to her putting pen to paper. And I'm sure with um, the collective, the indie show that she canceled, uh, she will make it up to them. Uh, but um, I I think she's close. I think she's close to putting pen to paper. If it hasn't happened already, uh, I just wish if it did happen, they would announce it. Um, We'll see. Then we'll keep it. Uh, the waiting game. The waiting game continues. Uh, the clock keeps. Well, the clock's not ticking, but the waiting game continues, and we'll just um, all just wait patiently. Well, maybe the clock is ticking. Maybe the clock is ticking because the longer she waits, you know, the more opportunity for AEW to sweeten their deal. Uh, so maybe the clock is ticking for, for Impact Wrestling. Uh, but but I shouldn't say that. Well. She, they've already made their offer, so um, at least you know they they made their offer and they're just they're playing the waiting game just like everybody else is playing the waiting game. So the waiting game continues, and uh, we'll see how it goes over the next couple of days. I I really hope she's signed by Bound for Glory. That's that's what I'm hoping for. My fingers are crossed for that, that she's signed by Bound for Glory. So the Good Brothers, Carl Anderson, Luke Gallows. They have said that they want to finish their career with Impact Wrestling. And that's that's just fantastic. That's fantastic to read. That's fantastic to hear. You have top wrestlers, the top one of the top tag teams in the world with Impact Wrestling. And they want to finish their careers with Impact Wrestling. They've just been with Impact Wrestling for what uh, a month a month or two and already they want to finish their career with impact wrestling they want the company to build around them carl anderson says he wants to be their world heavyweight champion he wants to be um uh the impact wrestling world heavyweight champion luke gallows um and carl anderson said that they want uh, impact wrestling to build around them and and they have a lot of influence in professional wrestling they can bring guys in so it's it's great to hear that two of the top guys in professional wrestling today want to finish their career with Impact Wrestling. And they're going to be heading over to uh, New Japan um, whenever they're able to end. And hopefully they could form some sort of working agreement between Impact Wrestling and New Japan Pro Wrestling. But that's all I'm going to say on that. I'm not going to go into that. I've, I've talked about that many times in the past. Uh, but but again, great news uh, to hear um, about Gallo's uh, Carl Anderson both want to um, they're enjoying their relationship so much with Impact Wrestling that they want to be there for the rest of their lives <laughs> alright so monthly specials monthly specials are coming back to Impact Plus and that's very very exciting news it's going to start October 3rd with uh, Victory Road it's going to be the main event will be Wait, oh, Eric Young. I'm sorry, I, I lost my train of thought there for a second. Eric Young uh, versus Eddie Edwards for the Impact Wrestling World Title. Now we know for a fact that Eric Young is not going to lose to Eddie Edwards. Speaking of Eddie Edwards, so it, first we'll get to Eddie, Eddie Edwards in a second. But great news that the monthly um, monthly Impact Plus shows are coming back, and hopefully uh, they can get back in front of a crowd. Uh, but 
the more impact wrestling, the better. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, October 3rd, Victory Road, Eric Young versus Eddie Edwards. Um, no chance in hell Eric Young is going to lose the title uh, to Eddie Edwards. Um, but, but Eddie Edwards gets the shot at Victory Road. And speaking of Eddie Edwards, as I, as I was going to, as I started going into it a little bit earlier, uh, prematurely, uh, Eddie Edwards was attacked. Eddie Edwards was attacked at the end of Impact Wrestling last week. And the big thing is now going to be who attacked Eddie Edwards. Who attacked Eddie Edwards? Didn't we just have a who attacked Trey Miguel storyline about like 30 seconds ago? <laughs> and now, now we're going right into the who attacked Eddie Edwards storyline. Um, I mean, couldn't we just, we maybe we could have waited for, uh, instead of, Instead of thirty seconds, maybe thirty seconds. Maybe we, we could have waited sixty seconds before we, uh, before we did um, the same storyline with Eddie Edwards as they did with uh, Trey Miguel. Um, but anyway, but that's that's the thing now. Who attacked Eddie Edwards? Uh, everyone's saying it's Eric Young. It's not Eric Young. It's too obvious. Just like uh, with Trey Miguel, he was thinking it, it was Ace Austin, but that was too obvious. Uh, but it did wind up being. Uh, I think it. I think it was Madman Fulton. That uh, that attacked. I, I don't think they actually came out and said who it was, but I think they alluded to it at, that it was Madman Fulton. I, they may have mentioned it, but but anyway, that's, we're talking about Eddie Edwards. So um, it's it's not Eric Young, and, and the rumor is that Eddie Edwards will be facing Ken Shamrock at Bound for Glory. So maybe uh, it's going to be Ken Shamrock as the person that attacked Eddie Edwards. Why he would have attacked Eddie Edwards, um, they're going to have to work on that storyline. I, I don't know why he would have attacked Eddie Edwards, unless unless it's Davey Richards. Unless Davey Richards is coming back, that would make a whole lot of more, that would make much more sense. Much more sense if it winds up to be Davey Richards. But I have a feeling it's going to be Ken Shamrock. But whoever it is, uh, whoever it is, we're most likely going to find out at Victory Road as they interfere in the match between Eric Young and Eddie Edwards, costing Eddie Edwards the match and um, enabling Eric Young to retain his title and to go on to Bound for Glory to face Rich Swan uh, for the Impact Wrestling World title. So that that's how it's going to play out. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, we got, I wonder how long they're going to do this whole... Uh, they're going to... Well, they would probably do it, like I said, to, uh, at least to October 3rd, another week or two. Um well, when October third is next Saturday, so uh, it would have to be on for another week, unless unless the lights go out and they come back on, and Eddie Edwards is is knocked out, and Eric Young takes advantage and wins the wins the title, and then they then they go on, um, and they proceed with the who attacked Eddie Edwards storyline, and um, and that's how it goes, and that's how it goes. So we'll find out. I'm sure we're gonna find out sooner or later. I'm saying I'm predicting Ken Shamrock, but. Uh, but we'll see. We will see who, in fact, is that vile human being who has attacked Eddie Edwards. All right. And before we wrap this up, I wasn't going to let let uh, let it go. I wasn't going to do this podcast without doing at least one dumb comment. I know I didn't uh, introduce it in the beginning of the show, but there is one short dumb comment that um, I want to uh, briefly discuss. Uh, when Impact Wrestling on uh, Facebook, they were um, talking about uh, what's coming up on uh, next Tuesday's show. Somebody had, someone I think named Curtis um, posted, uh, who cares, right? Who cares? So let's, uh, let's, uh, let's discuss that for a second. So Curtis wants to know who cares. I care, okay? I care. Everybody here on the Impact Lounge cares. 2.6 million Facebook followers care. 3.76 million YouTube sub- YouTube subscribers care. 618,000 Instagram followers care. 561,000 Twitter followers care. Millions upon millions of fans around the world that get Impact Wrestling in the numerous countries that it's shown in cares. So, Curtis, a lot of people do care about what's coming up on Impact Wrestling. On that note, I'm going to say thank you very much for listening to me today 
My name is Lewis Carlin. We're heard right here on the Impact Lounge. And until next time, thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye. Stay safe, everyone. So long. Bye-bye.